everybody. Uh, my name is Colin Slaap and I'm a watchmaker here in the Netherlands. And you're watching live watchmaker. Now we're getting somewhere. I got all the different uh, crystals. And uh, during uh, the second half of the stream, I'm going to show you how to polish your acrylic crystals to a superb finish with a real uh, uh, professional look. Normally we use that section uh, for teaching, but now um, I set up uh, the polishing machine uh, with the different compounds. So um, I will show you how to uh, uh, polish your crystals in a moment. And now we are really set. Here we have some, well, trend swatches or from the uh, even 19 antique watches, 100 years old and uh, I think that one is just from the 20s. How do you know what material it is uh, in your watch? How do you know what material your watch crystal is? There's a really easy trick I use. Misschien krijg ik ruzie met Lia. <laughs> yeah. But and that's uh, simply tap it uh, against your teeth. You immediately hear and feel what material it is. For me, that's the quickest and only way for uh, uh, determining the material of your watch crystal. Because we have glass actual glass that shatters when it's broken that's we called mineral crystals there's another material sapphire and that's harder so scratch resistant it's not easy to determine <laughs> what do you do if you don't have teeth <laughs> It's not easy to, to determine uh, the difference between a mineral crystal or a sapphire crystal. It's more, sapphire is more scratch resistant and it's a bit of destructive testing um, with another piece of glass if it's uh, uh, scratch resistant or not. It's not a simple trick from a uh, the shininess or something uh, um, to determine if it's mineral, glass or sapphire. To cover another uh, uh, item is, which is commonly used is AR and that's uh, anti-reflectant and that is a coating usually underneath the mineral or sapphire and that uh, reduces the reflection of the glass uh, and you now uh, nowadays you can get it in different colors but usually it used to be especially with vintage watches a, bi a bit of a, a bluish shine over it but first i want to uh, dive into the world of acrylic crystals and that is plastic like the older ones let's see if we can get this one um, this is an uh, an antique watch uh, over a hundred years old and still got the original crystal uh, we call it a crystal but it's not a, a, a mineral glass or an, a sapphire glass and you see the yellowish shine over it and oh and now you can see through the crystal and here you can see that the crystal is a bit yellowish green the discoloration and that is simply this is not plastic a hundred years ago they used celluloid and that's basically the same 
as film. It is flammable and the UV, the ultraviolet radiation, uh, makes, it, makes the discoloration. So it seems plastic, but it's uh, organic celluloid based. So that's are the really old ones. And um, personally, <laughs> I like the discoloration, but for example, this one here is a real old one and this got a, a modern crystal and this is exactly what the, the client uh, wanted, but I like the older original discoloration. But then again, it's uh, uh, whatever flicks your switch, whatever <laughs> floats your boat. There are so many different types of watch crystals. And uh, this is just the outer diameter in millimeters. There, there. Uh, 280 is 2.8 centimeters, just as a reference. So that's just the outer diameter. Uh, we are not sponsored in any way. Uh, but Sternkreutz is uh, a, a very important uh, producer of acrylic watch crystals. Oh, interesting, uh, UBI works. Celluloid is banned in the US since 1951. I was not aware of that. That's very interesting. So here we have the outer diameter and here we see the different thickness of watch crystals. Very thin savonette, usually for pocket watches, and a savonette is usually a pocket watch with a lid on top, so you cannot have a huge dome, so it's, it's way thinner. Normal, lentil, and here a bit higher, and that is super high, double H. And these are the normal um, the symbols being used for in relation to the thickness. Because there are two basic ways of securing your crystal in your watch case. These normal ones, as you can see there and there, are a bit like that. So they are placed in a watch case by reducing the outer diameter because you can see here is a bit thicker than there. So re you reduce the outer diameter, place it in, the, uh, in your watch case and then put it back and then it settles itself here in the watch case. other way is the straight ones and they work a bit different and I'll show you why. Those are these, usually waterproof and here it says with a tension ring and armored is a different uh, a term being used. And here we see that this crystal has got a metal ring inside. And if the metal ring is in the watch crystal, you cannot compress it but because there is a metal ring in there. And usually here it says DG that is uh, double gold or gilded. So that is the gold uh, tension ring. And 
I believe CH is chrome and then you got the, the silvery tensioning. So they are the two types which is the normal with the taillon. Uh, I think it, it was translated heel. So that's, it settles itself. And here we have the metal tension ring. So that goes straight from the top in the watch case. I do hope that makes sense. First, the normal ones. And these you can find at thrift shops or eBay. This is called Robur. Um, I see quite a few watchmakers who discard them and have uh, more modern tools. And I quite like these ones. Uh, we use them still quite regularly. They consist of these inserts, and this is really old. It might even be 60, 70, 80 years old. But still, uh, quite affordable and good to use. Because, and usually uh, used ook uh, for uh, pocket watches. If you have the real thin acrylic um, crystals, you cannot grip them. Uh, and I'll show you in a moment uh, um, these tools. But I wanted to sh uh, start with the, 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 the flattest one. So what you do is an insert there and then what you do is because the under bit is a bit like that curved and the other side is a bit concave as well so they fit together do you see that it's got an inner curve the one is convex and the other is concave. So simply, if you apply pressure, this one goes down. It folds over this, so it goes like that. And you can see my elbows, the outer diameter is reduced. And then with the same here you place it in the ring and then pull it back out and then it's stuck so that is the old way of uh, placing your acrylic crystals and you cannot use uh, uh, mineral or even sapphire because you cannot bend it it breaks so this is solely for plastic acrylic and even uh, the older uh, uh, celluloid crystals. So this is the Robur. And I put all the names in, uh, in the description down there. When you bend the plastic, you can see all the cracks in it. So it's not always uh, the best to buy very old um, acrylic crystals because they might break and see uh, the, the crater cracks uh, in them. So please be aware of that. So these are the Robur and uh, I placed the name in the, in the crystal in the, in the crystal in the comments down below.